Hi, my name is Patty Durrell. I'm the CEO and founder of Rock Solid Fitness. We're a one-on-one -on -one personal training studio in Dunedin, Florida. I'm also a licensed physical therapist assistant, and I'm here to talk to you today about habits. So habits are usually good things or bad things. They're automatic things that we do in our life. And a lot of people have a hard time developing good habits and changing bad habits. So I wanted to talk to you first uh, about a book by Charles Duhigg called The Power of Habits. It's one of my favorite books when it comes to habits. He talks very simply about them. He really helps you understand that there, it's just like a habit cycle or a habit loop that he calls. It's a cue that kind of sets you up to have a certain habit, um, which would be your routine. And then of course, the reason why it becomes a habit is because there's a perceived reward with it. So it's cue, routine, and reward, and that's the habit loop. Um, the other thing that's really important, I think, about habits is we don't really stop a habit, we kind of change a habit. So meaning if you have a habit of doing something, you're really probably not going to get rid of the habit because you still have this kind of cue that kind of tells you you need to do something to get a certain reward. And so that cue is the thing that's kind of always there. Um, so what you're, you're doing is really changing the routine and then the reward would remain the same. So you really replace habits, you don't quit habits. So changing bad habits into good habits, creating new habits is usually what people are trying to do when it comes to habits. One of the things that I love to talk about is stacking habits. So let me back up and just explain the cue, routine and reward part of that. So let's just say, um, and this does happen to me. I'm, I'm a real people person. I love to interact with people. So if I'm, I have this timer um, on timer, timer off system um, that my team knows about. So if my door is closed, I have a little magnet that sits on a little metal box. It's real simple. It has timer on with a frown face in red. And on the other end of that, if I flip it, it has timer off in green with a smiley face. So timer on means that I am in my deep work, I'm trying to get my stuff done, don't disturb me. Well, if I'm holed up in my office and that timer on is flipped up so that I'm in my deep work, I can get real antsy. I need people for energy. I need to like interact with people. So one of the things I do is I'm like, oh, I, I, I'm antsy, I need to get up. So I'll go find people. I might be totally disrupting other people who are doing their deep work, but I'm gonna go seek people or I'm gonna make a cup of coffee because that's gonna bring me to people. So I'll start that process and then I'll like, oh, all of a sudden I'm interacting with people. It's really coffee that brought me to those people, right? And um, that's my reward is that connection and that kind of break in my routine. So if I wanted to change that routine, rather than having coffee, I might say, I wanna have water instead. Well, if I get up and I have water and I'm not interacting with people, I'm not gonna feel the same reward, right? So I'm not gonna feel that same connection. So maybe my routine is to schedule, like I know I'm gonna get antsy at a certain time, so I'm gonna schedule like a little appointment or I'm gonna say, hey, is it okay if I connect with you or make a phone call or some other kind of reward of feeling connected. So I hope that makes sense. You change the routine in the middle um, and the, the reward and the cue would kind of stay the same. So it's all about changing your habit. So when, when I was realizing that I wasn't drinking water, um, and you just learned that coffee is one of my like favorite things to have, um, I decided that before I would have the reward of my coffee in the morning, I love the taste of it, I love to sit down with a warm cup and kind of have my own time. I thought that, hey, if I can stack my coffee habit, because that happens no matter what, if I could put other things around my coffee, then I could get in the habit with you know good new things as well. So now in the morning before I have coffee, I will have at least one coffee mug full of water. So I can't put anything in my coffee mug until water has been in there first. So that's an idea of stacking habits. And that was years ago that I started that habit with the water. So now 
I've learned that I need vitamin D and vitamin B. Um, I need to supplement those two things and I'm terrible at taking like supplements or pills. If I get a prescription for something, I'm just terrible at getting that into my routine. So now my vitamins have become stacked with my coffee. So I don't get my coffee now until I have my vitamin D, my vitamin B, my water. The most recent thing that I've been trying to get into a better routine with is um, we all took here at Rock Solid Fitness, we all took this positive intelligence course. And so there's um, doing what it's called PQ reps, kind of building your positive mentality muscle. And so I want to do that every morning. So now I don't get to have my second cup of coffee until I do my PQ reps. So that's a habit I'm still in the process of developing. But the cool thing about habits is that once your brain starts to get this cue, you know, something tells you you gotta go do something. For some people it's bad things. I'm stressed out, I gotta have a cigarette or I've had a bad day, I need to go drink a bottle of wine. You know, sometimes the, our habits aren't very healthy. Um, but the cue is maybe the stress or the anxiety or I'm bored. But there's a definite cue that's always going to be there. It's going to stay the same. That routine and that reward are what, you know, you're going to change, the cue routine and the reward there. So um, for me, the reward is if I'm getting my PQ reps in, I'm in a more positive state for the day, um, and then, you know, everything is better. So stacking those habits is a real important thing. So sometimes, too, with habits, motivation, like people will wait to be motivated to start a habit. And I tell everybody, listen, um, you know, motivation isn't going to happen. Like start the routine, see positive things happening, and then the reward will be, oh, I feel better. And that reward is going to make you want to develop that habit of, you know, the cue. I see my sneakers or I see the appointment in my book to go to the gym. I'm going to do that routine because the reward is I feel better. And once your brain starts to get that reward and it has it on a consistent basis, it doesn't have to think about the habit anymore. That's why someone gets anxious, they're smoking a cigarette. They're not thinking about it, they're automatically doing it. Somebody has a stressed out day and when their stressed out day is the perceived reward is if I have a glass or two of wine, I'm going to feel better then that becomes the habit. You don't think about that anymore. The brain kind of shuts off with habits. We really learn that when we start to drive, right? When we learn to drive. At first, everything, you gotta pay attention to everything. You gotta really make sure you're doing everything right. But after a while, you might drive to work and really not even remember driving to work or drive home from the grocery store and really not remember driving home. It just becomes a habit. So habits are, hard to break the longer they are because your brain has gotten used to that reward and it really loves to have success your brain whether it's a good reward or a bad reward it loves to have success and it just automatically falls into that routine to that habit so um, habits are really really great if they're good habits and good for you um, so if there's a habit you're trying to work on in your life something that you feel is not serving you well something that is, you know, maybe even it's a mental conversation that we are having with yourself. Like, you know, if, if I'm not successful it, with, it, you know, completing a task to end, then maybe the conversation in my head might be you're a loser or you're stupid or gosh, we talk sometimes really badly to ourselves. But changing that habit as well is really important. So think about the habits that you have that you might want to change and then make small like changes in that routine, right? Whatever that routine is, say, what can I do differently here? Instead of having a glass of wine, if it's, if it's a problem for you, maybe you can have a glass of seltzer water in your wine glass with you know some lime squeezed in there or some cranberry juice in there to make it even look like wine. But the, the cue is the same. The routine is similar, but what's in that wine glass is different. The reward will be the same because your brain will still go through that cycle, if that makes sense. So I challenge you to just maybe find uh, one routine that you want to change or maybe one habit that you want to develop and try and stack that habit with something else that you're already doing in your life and see how that goes. So remember, this is a great book by Charles 
Duhigg um, called The Power of Habits and stack your healthy habits and try to change those unhealthy ones. Thank you, Patty Durrell from Rock Solid Fitness.